last year, Europe's biggest selling EV wasn't a Tesla, it was this, the Renault Zoe. Fifth Gear wanted to see what all the fuss was about, and while we were at it, we thought we'd take a look at its rivals as well. Super minis, city cars and small hatchbacks that roam urban areas need to possess a certain set of skills. Yeah, they need to be easy to drive through busy city centres, have some practicality to chuck some kids in the back, plus have the range to get you to the office and back again. And if you're anything like me, need to be entertaining to drive. Yeah, so uh, not a lot to ask then. Renault Zoe was originally launched in 2012 as an electric alternative to the Clio, and it's been in a class of its own ever since. With no other super mini sized electric cars on the market, the Zoe has gone on to sell well over a quarter of a million units. But everything changed in 2019 when a bunch of other car makers crashed the Zoe's party. So, to see how the newcomers stack up against the Renault, we've gathered the electric versions of the Mini, the Fiat 500 and Peugeot 208, plus the brand new Honda e. And we've lined up three tests to whittle them down, eliminating the weakest as we go to the winner and the car that you should be happy to drive every single day. We'll be assessing interiors and outright performance later on. Yes! Go on, girl! But to start, we're taking each car out on our private track for the kind of quick test drive that you'd take when shopping for a new motor. The two that impress the least will be eliminated. Right, time for the test drives. And first up is the original EV city car, the Zoe. This immediately feels like a conventional hatchback to me. The steering is pretty accurate. It's not the most comfortable seat in the world. I don't have, like, masses of support, but what there is, I think, is enough for this level of driving. Yes, totally agree with that. Little bit of air. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try the next one? Next, it's the Honda e. It's more expensive than the Zoe, and thanks to its comparatively smaller battery, its range is also much less. But it's not all bad news. I am so excited about this car. Are you? Do you love the way it looks? I love the way it looks. It's so much fun as well. It's really like the steering is so direct. It's really responsive. Rear wheel drive as well. Yes, I know. How cool is Proper that? Proper driver's car. OK, first impressions. Yeah. Yeah, bang on. Good. Time for one of the petrol power big hitters to enter the electric ring. The Fiat 500e's 42 kilowatt battery pack delivers a respectable range of 277 miles. But long journeys in the electric Cinquecento might not be everyone's cup of tea. I feel like I am in quite a bouncy thing. Yeah, it's not filling me with as much confidence as the previous car. I don't normally get car sick, but I, I feel oh. the most car sick And Rory, in this that, car. that's music to my ears because I'm not going to slow down because <laughs> I'd like to see you chuck on camera. <laughs> Time to take a look at Peugeot's E208. At just over 27 grand, it is the cheapest car in our test, while its 56 kilowatt battery is the largest and can travel 217 miles between charges. This is definitely the most grown up of all the cars. The body control is night and day when you compare it to the Fiat 500e. <laughs> it feels like a car and not a shopping trolley. Yes. Should you send it over this? <laughs> yeah, it can, it can do that. It feels plush. I like it. Yeah. Finally, it's the Mini Electric. This is the priciest car on test, while its 32.6 a kilowatt battery pack is the smallest. But the iconic city car still has a few tricks up its sleeve. It feels very well made, very well engineered, really lovely turning. I can feel the whole chassis. It's talking to me nicely. It's a typical mini thing, isn't yeah. it? That go-kart driving yeah. feel. It's robust, totally robust. Yeah, it feels hewn from a solid piece of granite, <laughs> almost. Good job. 
So, Rory, we have driven all five, we and have. now it is time to say goodbye to two of them, based primarily on the driving impression and the range. The Honda E, we have to talk about its range. I know, it's not great. I think in the real world, you might get about 120 miles out of this thing, which isn't amazing, but it was fantastic to drive. I really enjoyed that. Yep. For me, that was like the original Mini. It was, it was fun, so yep. that stays. Absolutely, it needs yep. to stay. Cool. The Peugeot E208. I think is really good. It feels like a good, solid, grown-up hatchback that I think anyone would be, you know, quite happy with. Yeah, we want to know more about that, so that stays. That, that, that can stay. Yep. And then the Mini. I thoroughly enjoyed it, had a lot of fun. It does what a Mini is supposed to do. It drives really well, handles great. So even though the range isn't amazing on the Mini, I think it's another one that needs to stay. Yeah. Cool. <gasps> Which means we have found our two that are going to leave us. The first one is the Renault Zoe, the granddaddy of the group. However, once we'd driven the newcomers, we did find this a bit lacking. Yeah, I know it's been around for ages. It set the standard, but I think the standard has been kind of superseded now. So even though it's nice, yeah. I think it has to go. OK, au revoir to Goodbye. the Renault. And then to the Fiat, it's chow chow, I'm afraid. The body roll was just too much for me and, and the turn in wasn't crisp enough. I felt enough. sick. Yeah. So I think on that basis, the Fiat 500, that's another one that's got to go.